Hi again, everybody. Welcome back. H2O here. Left you hanging with a question yesterday, like I tend to do. And I believe the question was based on Acts 16, 16 through 34. So before we get into the answer and then go on into today's um, question for the day, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, as always, we come before you. We love you so much. We're so grateful, Lord, that you always are with us, that you hear us, that you always have our best intentions in, in your heart. We know that you have said that the thoughts you have toward us, Lord God, in Jeremiah, that you think about us in good ways, only to prosper us and only for hope and for a, f a good future. And we thank you for these things. We ask you as we open up these scriptures that you speak to us individually, each person that's um, got this video on right now and doing this study with us. We just pray that you'd speak to each person individually with what they need. Speak to me, Lord God, too, with what I need. Thank you, Lord, for these things. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what specifically did Paul and Silas do in Acts 16 that demonstrated the armor of God? And again, we've got those five pieces of armor, and if we think back through each piece and think about whether they used it and if they did, how did they use it? So think about the truth girdle. If you know much about Paul and Silas, you know that they were living a very righteous life. Uh, as Paul says, I've, I've done no harm to anyone. I didn't take money or steal from anyone. I've worked hard to support my own self. And I've only come speaking the truth of the gospel. So he's always been prepared with gospel shoes, the third um, piece of armor. So here they are. They've been out preaching in the street as our uh, reading began. And they basically just told the truth, the gospel, and that got them in trouble. So when they get arrested and they get beaten, oh my goodness, the things they went through for doing no harm to anyone. Um, you know, they're just sharing the gospel message. So here they are in jail. What do they do? Do they complain? Is there one time listed where they complained, oh, woe is me. Hey, I've been mistreated and harmed and wronged. They didn't whine, they didn't complain, they didn't do any of that. What did they do? They worshipped. They worshipped God with song, with psalms and singing. You know, people watch what we do when we're going through hard times. And as you know, this has been a really hard uh, week or so for us with uh, what happened with our little dog. And I tell you what, sometimes it is a sacrifice of praise that we bring. God is so worthy of my praise, regardless of what happens on this earth. The very fact that he would send his own son to die on that cross for me, and he wants to spend time with me, he's worthy of my praise, always. Worthy of my faith and my trust. And that's what Paul and Silas are demonstrating there, that even though we don't understand with the faith shield that we talked about. I'm sure Paul and Silas, in their human side, didn't fully understand and certainly didn't want the things that were happening to them to happen. But there they were, so they worshipped God. They showed their faith. In so doing, they're preaching the gospel continually, even to the jailers, even to the others who are in prison. They held up that breastplate of righteousness by not acting wrong. And I'm sure if they had, they would have asked for forgiveness, which is all we need to do as well, to wear that breastplate of righteousness and then maintain the helmet of salvation. They knew it wasn't about their salvation. They knew this is a spiritual battle. They, like David, understood this is not against flesh and blood. This is not against the ones who beat me. This is not against that the sorcerer that I preached uh, preach to. This is not about the man who complained to me stealing all his money by um, taking away the source of his income. This is a spiritual battle. This is going on because we are preaching the gospel. And they understood that, so they worshipped. 
Do you worship? When you're going through hard times, do you turn on the Christian music from your heart? Do you worship? You know worship's more than singing a song. Worship often is a sacrifice. And that's what Paul and Silas demonstrated was the sacrifice of praise. And God met them, didn't he? God showed up, showed out. Others were saved. They didn't even run off when they could. They were like, no, because we understand, again, it's not about flesh and blood. This is spiritual. I'm here to preach the gospel. And they did that. So let's um, talk. And now, of course, the question of today, this reading that you're to do today, is based on Luke 11, verses 14 through 23. Jesus is giving a parable here. Think about your answers. Look at the questions. Who is the strong man in verse 21? And who is the stronger man in verse 22? And consider again, Jesus is giving a parable. Think about the spiritual implications here. That's always the point of a parable that Jesus gives, is to teach us a spiritual lesson. So really think about the spiritual side. What would be the right answers to these questions? Now, we won't see you tomorrow, because today should be Friday for you if you're doing this the Monday through Friday. Um, but we'll be back on Monday. Enjoy your weekend. And we'll answer this question first thing when we come back on Monday. Enjoy. See you then.